Okay, well, thank you for joining me this morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where, where in the world you're from. So this uh, webinar is going to be around BIML transformers. It is a missed only feature. Just get that out of the way right up front. And for me personally, it is, I suppose, the crown jewels of BIML. Um, and as one of the people posted on our user group, it is sort of the secret source. The presentation does follow on from the previous uh, two that we've done, and hopefully you've received the notifications from Stephen and, and watched the first two webinars. If not, I'll briefly go through some of the features we've covered, just in case you are completely new to the to the technology or new to the um, series, um, but not in too much detail. So if, if something is a little bit, well, what is he talking about? Just go back to the first two webinars and then revisit this one and it'll all make sense to you. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been using Bimble Script now for about four years, pretty much um, as soon as I got my hands on it. Uh, it was just after it was publicly released as part of Bits Helper. Um, about two years of that has been in Bits Helper itself. And then um, you know, I'm pretty crazy about Bimble and I'm a contributor at BimbleScript.com along with um, a whole bunch of other people that contribute. So if you've got any questions around Bimble, that's a great place to go. And I'm the co-founder of Verigence Australia. So what have we covered so far? So in the first webinar, um, I just basically showed you a little bit about how to extract tables and use include files and call Bimbo scripts just to centralize your code. In the second webinar, we expanded on that and we actually created a, a load and staging area that will identify chains for you. And this is a cut down version of, of a pattern that we use. And on the left hand side there, you'll see the control flow. And on the right hand side, you will see the data flow. So the control flow is pretty simple. It's a sequence container that basically just checks if yesterday files exist. And if it didn't, yesterday's cache file existed. If it doesn't, it goes and creates an empty cache file. It goes into the data flow task, which basically extracts everything from the table. We use a custom component to get a checksum, identify the chains, and then throw uh, pumps out a raw file and then pumps out a cache file. And then obviously the last bit there is a script in the control flow, the last um, SCT process file. Simply just goes and sets up all the files ready for the next day. So what we're gonna do um, here today is pretty much take that and I'm gonna show you how we strip most of that out into transformers going forward. So why use Bimble and pretty much why use transformers? Well, Bimble firstly, it allows you to enforce standard patterns and best practices. So, you know, the bits in orange that um, I've highlighted is relevant to what I'm going to try and demonstrate to you today. Um, speed and performance of development, most of you have already experienced that. And it's the economies of scale and reusability. We can manage, easily manage uh, changes mid-project or in production because we're only making changes to very small components of the code. And we reduce the tedious, repetitive work. Uh, we spend time where it matters most. None of us really got into um, business intelligence to copy and paste SSIS packages and, and, and do 20 or 30 uh, load to staging packages manually and drag and drop and drag and drop. So that's not what we want to do. We want to spend time where it matters most, which is working with the business in solving their problems. More configuration, less development. So obviously we're going to use metadata, metadata, metadata. That's what Bimble is about. It's about getting metadata from any source, anywhere in your business, using that to configure a solution, less development, more configuration. The way I see Bimble, and, and especially in the transformer, it's, it's just like building Lego. Now think about Lego blocks. Even in that whole big pile that's lying in front of you, there is actually some structure. So if you think about a manual ETL process, well, there is structure. Lego blocks is the ultimate reusable component, but with all things that is reusable, you are going to need a plan. So what you do with your Lego blocks is you actually go and define a pattern. And so you, as the BI architect, now sit and says, well, hold on, I've got all of these building blocks. So every single piece of Bimble, think of that as a building block that you are going to put together in some way or some pattern. So and this is where you as a BI architect decide in which order are you going to construct these building blocks and how are they going to come together to actually then create your solution. And if you look at those solutions over there, they are using very similar building blocks. And if you look at them, maybe the color is slightly different on one building block than another building block, but it's just a collection of Lego blocks that are constructed with different colors and put together in a different way which will give you a unique and repeatable solution. So before I, get, I go on to the transformers, I just want to reiterate the, the product overview. So on the top left, we have MIST, which is what we're going to work in today. If you're using Bits Helper, that's where your Bits Helper icon would go. And then you go down into the two different 
types of BIML script now we are going to focus on the shared BIML scripts which is the transformers now these are scripts that you will share across your entire organization or if you are working in a professional services or consulting company that is really where you are going to be wanting to put your IP if you go to a customer and you talk about framework you talk about adoption you are talking about you know standards it is all going to sit in this shared scripts layer here and what transformers allow you to do and I'll demonstrate this a little bit later on is actually the ability to obfuscate or remove your framework from the customer so that he only sees your framework at the end when you hit build it's not while you're developing the framework is just sitting there in the background and I'll give you a couple of illustrations in a second the customer specific or project specific BIML scripts is another layer that and the, these two layers of scripts together are passed to the BIML compiler and because we're talking about MIST today you will then be able to pump out your documentation and any tracking which is a great way of keeping your documentation live um, database uh, schemas and TSQL ETL which we've covered before already and then you can do your cubes and analysis services what transformers really is all about is about the plumbing should be hidden and that's what frameworks is about now I'd like you to do the following exercise for me just look around the room that you are in right now and just look around what you don't see now depending on where you obviously sit, if you're sitting in a park obviously good on you but the thing if you're sitting in a building like me what you will see, not see is you won't see any electrical wires all of those wiring is hidden in walls or in ceilings or in floors and that's what transformers allows you to do it takes all of the stuff that is really internal data whereas plumbing or wiring and it hides them away in the walls so that the developers can only use this development space without having to worry about all of the the wires being in their place in their face and painting around wires and all those kind of stuff so that's what transformers is so think about that when you actually look at the rest of the stuff it's it's taking all of that hit stuff and just hiding it away it's still there and when you hit build it all comes back when you plug in the the PowerPoint there is still power there but it's just not visible at design time so to speak so this is sort of what we will cover today so I'm taking the package that we created in webinar 2 and I'm gonna change it and say well hold on I'm actually in my opinion um, and I, I know we are all BI architects out of there and the one you um, thing that is unique about BI architects if you all put them together is that every single one of them have a framework of some sort and um, the other thing that we have in common as BI architects we all think that our framework is the best one out there what we'll do is um, we'll take this uh, framework and I'm, I want you to look at this for a couple of seconds and just look at that and go right what in this package is business logic and what in this package is actually internal data warehouse plumbing what is the wires that we can put away now as a data warehouse architect or BI architect we are so close to the product sometime or so close to the actual process of creating data warehouses that we sometimes forget that all of these type ones and dimensions and facts and you know slowly changing this and the uh, drive column here and multicasts and all that kind of stuff we actually have well I certainly uh, and if you're anything like me you probably have done the same as we actually think that we have to tell the business about that they have to understand what a type one dimension is and a type two dimension and they have to understand all of these internal data warehouses well to be honest they don't really care they really only want their reports at the end of the day I mean if you really get down to it that's what they do so I'm gonna show you what I believe out of this package is plumbing and what is business logic so the first thing that I'm gonna remove is I'm gonna remove the sequence container and I'm gonna remove the uh, process file at the bottom because you know to be honest that is just for me to identify what has changed and, and, and do some f um, file handling the next thing I'm going to do is go over to my data flow and say what out of that is actually business logic well this is a staging process and I'm saying well actually only the source and the target is what the business are interested in everything in the middle is just for me as a data warehouse architect or BI architect to actually identify things that has changed all that the business want is they want their data from this different sources put into a destination now when you do a dimensional process or fact process yes there's going to be a little bit more business logic in there like derived columns of column a plus column b gives me a whole new column and some formulas and things like is actually business logic what i'm trying to do here is is show you the difference between how much of this package is actually plumbing and at the end of it what we will be left with is a single source and a, a raw file and everything else that you see that is grayed out will be in will be in transformers 
Before we start with the demo of the transformer frameworks, I'm just going to go through what we're going to be doing in the presentation just to give you an idea of what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the sequence container as discussed. We're going to put that into a package, uh, into a BIML file called TF package source container the BIML. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the script component that does the process file and put that into a TF package target script.bml. And after we've done that, we'll move over to the data flow. So in the data flow, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the top section in before the multicast. We're going to strip that out. And we're going to put that into a tf-package-source-lookup, which is basically taking the lookup components. We're going to strip out the multicast with the cache transformation out and put that into tf-package-target-destination. So what we will be left with at the end is only the source component and the raw file destination component as discussed before. So I'm going to hop straight into a demonstration here. Let me just open this transformer up. A transformer framework here and I'll show you very quickly here on the left hand side here where we left this off we've got a couple of files in the project view here and what what I've already got is I've got the environment file and the source tables here so what I have is I have my connections predefined for me I have my and this is all from webinar 2 so what I'm showing you here now if you go well how did I do that go and watch webinar 2 and you'll see it but I've got connections databases schemas and I have all of these tables here also what I've what where I've left um, uh, presentation two off is that um, you know if I were to I'm not going to do this now but I have this uh, BIML file here that we left it off and what this BIML file is I'm going to just uh, collapse things down a little bit so you can see what I mean so there I have my container my sequence container I have my data flow and I have my script task so I'm going to start at the top here and the first thing I would say is remember I'm going to remove things. So the first thing I want to do is remove this container. Okay. So I'm just going to literally go and cut that out. And I'll add it into a transformer in a minute. And we're going to go through this systematically. But let me just bring that back in. Remember what the transformer does is the, uh, what the container in my package is the first object that I have in my in my package. So therefore it doesn't need a precedence constraint. So if every object that is the first object or the first BIML um, container do not need a precedence constraint. So my data flow task here is actually saying, hold on, go and hook, my, hook me up to my sequence container. Now, if I remove my sequence container, I also then have to remove this precedence constraint, okay? Because now the data flow task will be the first object. The next thing I want to do is, and I'm going to prepare things here a little bit. The next thing I want to do is I want to say, before I go and show you how to hook up this container in a transformer, I'm just going to prepare my data flow task so that my transformer knows that that container is before this data flow task. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually adding in a transformer uh, annotation here. Now think of annotations in the context of transformers. It's a little bit like the glue. It's the thing that brings everything together. and Annotations are passed forward or down through the BIML compiler attached to the object. So this annotation here, all of these annotations is now attached to this data flow. So as I go through my data or my, my BIML compiler, this annotation and these tags are attached to this data flow so I can reference them going in, the, in, in, in further um, processes. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to give it a tag. Say, listen, hold on, this data flow task here. Now imagine you have a massive project. You could have a whole heap of different types of data flows, but for this specific data flow, I'm going to say, listen, I want to attach a tag called initialize target. And then also I want to prepare some things because at this point in time here, I'm in a uh, for each loop and I have my table node. So I want to add a tag that says my SSI of safe scope name. And a safe scope name, SSI safe scope name is basically just a, a SSI safe name. In other words, if I potentially in my table name had full stops or commas or any crazy character, the MIST and the BIML language will say, listen, if you use SSI safe scope name, we are going to return to you a name that is actually safe to be used in SSI. So um, that's what SSI safe scope name is. And I have already prepared the cache query. Okay, so I'm just passing down the cache query, the SI safe scope name, and I'm adding this tag to the data flow. So let me go into my transformer here, um, and I've got some empty ones that I've prepared. Go back in here again. So before I actually start putting in some of the code here, I just want to take you through the basics that you need to understand with transformers. So the first thing here is the is the directive. 
we use the directive called target, which tells us this transformer is going to target a some, what is it targeting? And the thing it's targeting is of type data flow task. So what it'll do is when I hit the build button, it's actually going to go and say, listen, in my entire missed project, go and target all my data flow tasks, right? So it, it's it, at this stage is saying, listen, I'm going to target every single data flow task that I have. And the merge mode is local replace. Now I'm only going to cover two merge modes today. Um, and there is a great article on bimblescript.com by Scott Curry that goes through these uh, merge modes in more detail. And uh, to be honest, the two that I'm covering is probably the ones that you'll use 80 to 90% anyway. So first one I do is, is explain to you what local replace means. Now local replace in a merge mode means that whatever I'm targeting, so I'm going to target a data flow task. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace that data flow task with whatever is inside of these two transformation ta uh, tags. So it does a local replace. So if I've got a data flow task, the first thing it does, it strips out that whole data flow task out of it. Now remember that, that I am now actually replacing that data flow task with whatever is inside of these transformations. Now when I started looking at transformation the first time, and when Scott explained this to me the first time, I went like, what? I've just put all of this effort in building this data flow task. Are you telling me that I'm just stripping the whole thing out and throwing it away? Well, I'm going to show you how you string it together. So just bear with me. I'm putting it back, so don't get too excited right now. And then what I'm doing here is I'm saying, well, listen, I now have this data flow task is now my target node. So every single data flow task, I now have a target node. And I'm saying that target node, does it have an annotation of initialized target? So this is where I am now referencing those annotations that I've attached to the data flow task. And if it has an, init an annotation of initialized target, well, I'm going to want to go and get that target node. I'm going to do a get tag. So I'm going to get the other tag called SSI scope name, and I'm putting it in a variable. So now I have already read two of those annotations. The first one is to say, only go and look for data flow tasks that I have set a tag called initialize target, and then whatever the save scope name is. So let me put the container back in. There we go, there's the container. And this code is exactly the same as the code that I have taken out of my package, except for I'm just setting these variables now. So where I used to have table node dot SSI safe scope name, I've now replaced them with whatever I've put in the tag. And the only other thing I've done here is again, I am now reading target node get tag dot cash query, uh, the cash query. So the query that I'm passing down. But as you can see here, the BIML code is the same. I'm just hooking it up slightly differently with a couple of different things here. So when you have, um, as I said, when you are building all of these BIML up, and you are going to use transformers, it is not like you are going to be reinventing the wheel. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to now remember what I said this this sequence container was the first object in the data flow task, and now I have put my data flow task in there. So the data flow task is now if I just replace my data flow task in here, it won't actually be hooked up to the container. So the next thing I'm going to do here is actually going to replace that. And I'm going to say, well, the first thing I want to do is I want to go and hook up my president's constraint. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing target node.get bimble. And what that will do is that's going to go and say, well, I'm doing a local replace on this data flow task. But my data flow task is my target node. And if it's, if I say target node.get bimble, that will give me all of the bimble back that I'm just throwing out. Okay, so this is the bit that I'm actually putting back my transformer. And then what I'm doing here is I'm saying, well, because I'm adding something to the beginning of my target node, I just have to go and replace the transformers with this president's constraint, which hooks it back up to the sequence container. So I'll save that down. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to do a convert live Bimble script here. What this will do is this is going to give me all of my packages again. And if I now look at my package here, You'll see here that I have my data flow task, but I have no sequence container in front of it. Okay, so I've stripped out my sequence container from that. The next thing I want to show you is how do we how do we debug our transformers? So how do we actually get into the transformers? Well, let me just go back into my transformer here. You can do it a couple of different ways. The first one is you can try and preview it. So hitting this update preview, and then you can select one of your packages. And what it'll then do is it'll give you in this preview expanded space, it will show you the expanded BIML. So that's a way for you to say, as you can see here, there's my president's constraint and I've added my, there's my annotations and here's my president's constraint added. 
So because Transformers isn't in the, I suppose, it's not design time, so you can't really preview it along with your package. You have to kind of do it in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to show you another way to do that. I'm just going to quickly go back in here and then go to this guy and change that back to a reference. And then I'm going to execute it. So I don't do this a lot because I tend to use my live Bimble scripts a lot, but I'm going to execute this Bimble script here, which now gives me the physical um, Bimble files here. And if I open this up now, as you can see in the background here, it's not attached to it. What you can then also do is you can actually click on the data flow task. Remember, I have said that this transformer needs to run on a data flow task and obviously where it's initialized target. So I can now right click on this and then I can say execute transformers down the bottom here and I can go and execute this transformer and pretty much see in my design surface back again the, the, the transformer being executed. Now you can do it this way or you can do it the other way. Okay, I'm going to head back in here and I'm going to now strip out some more um, sorry, strip out some more transformers, uh, uh, code for transformers here. So I've removed my first object there, that's in a transformer. Um, as I said, as I want to go and remove my script task down the bottom here. And I'm just going to do that exactly. So I don't need to, again, go and do any annotations. My annotations are done for me because my annotations is already associated to the data flow task. So I'm going to strip that out. And I'm going to go into this one here. So again, this is not a complicated one. I'm going to show you here the difference between putting something in front of the data flow task and putting it to the bottom. So again, I have, I'm targeting a data flow task. I'm doing a local replace. And again, I'm, I'm looking for my initialized target annotation. And then the first thing I do here is I say target node.getbimble. So the first thing I do is I say, well, listen, I have my data flow task, just pump it back out. And the next thing I want to do now is after I've pumped out my data flow task, I literally just want to put in that script container back again. So here's my script container. And again, all I'm doing here is I now need to, to change the input path. And I'm now saying, hook up this input path to the target node.name.output path. So whatever the output path of that target node is, go and hook that up. And that's how you kind of hook up the first component to your target node. Okay. So again, not a whole lot in it. If you think about it, it's just a different way of structuring your data and then using your target node inside of these transformation tags um, for the transformers. And it'll all come together a little bit at the end. So I'm going to go through this a little bit, not more quickly, but um, as I said, here is here is my um, data flow task. And what I want to keep is I want to keep my source query. Okay. And I want to keep my, and I want to remove all of this. So I'm going to remove that now. Um, I'm going to remove my custom component, my checksum component um, that I've removed. And now I wanted to remove all of my multicast and my conditional Smith over there. And what I'm left with is I'm left with, um, let me just take up a couple more spaces here. Just so you can get everything on the screen. And what I'm left with here, I'll zoom in a little bit, is I've got my source. Okay. And I have my raw file destination. This raw file here used to be locked, hooked up to my conditional split chains, but that doesn't exist in this data flow anymore or in this transformation. Law. So I need to actually now go and hook it back up to this guy here because this is going to be my OLEDB source that's going to go into my raw file. And I'm just going to take this out and I'll take that out. So now I'm hooked up to my OLEDB source schema safe name, basically that guy there dot output file. Now my raw file is hooked up to this. The only other thing I'm going to need to do here very quickly is again, as I said, is I need to prepare my data flow for my transformation or my transformers. So I'm just going to drop in here an annotation here, tag here and let's bring this across. And all I'm doing here is I'm saying, listen, to this OLEDB source here, I want to add, oh, I've just got a tag says add source. So that's the way I'm going to identify it. Again, I've got my SI um, safe scope name and I've got my scope name. Now the scope name effectively is my, my fully qualified table name. Okay. So that's sort of going to be my database dot schema dot, or it's, I think it's just schema dot table name, um, but that's a, a fully qualified name, so to speak. So that's what scope names are. So I've added this annotation here to my OLEDB source. Okay.
I'm gonna now convert this to live Dylan script here hey look at that there's my packages and if I open these up now what you'll see here is you'll see that I have my source and my target but I obviously now need to go and hook up those transformers here so I'm gonna do the first one here and pretty much um, what I'm doing here is I'm doing again I'm doing a target of type OLEDB source and just look at OLEDB source here as you can see here the it's it is case sensitive but because you are in um, MIST um, the first time I copied and pasted OLEDB source was obviously the same way as it's defined in a tag but if you you obviously have MIST so you do have the IntelliSense there to get the right thing um, again I'm doing a local replace I'm looking for a target node of annotation add source and then I'm preparing a couple of variables here the first one here is I'm just getting my target node SO scope name then I'm getting my scope name so now I have both those variables and then I do something else here I'm saying well go to my AST table node or to my root node dot tables so obviously I'm going to go to my root node dot tables and doing a bit of a link query where the scope name of that table equals the scope name that I'm passing in here. So now I'm actually getting a table node or table object in a variable. So what that means is I can now reference everything about that table. Okay, so then again, I'm doing a local replace on this OLEDB source. So the first thing I want to do is I want to pump back out my uh, transform, my, my OLEDB source. I want to keep that in place. And then I want to, I've literally pasted all of that code here and I'm going to go through the code in not a great deal the the first thing we need to know is again the very first component you need to hook up to the target node and again I'm doing that using target node.name and the rest of the component literally again apart from SI scope name is exactly the same my lookup component there's nothing really that I've changed there it's exactly the same and I'm referencing the table node that I've just hooked up here and then I do my derived column and again that bimble code is literally without maybe probably 2% changes it is exactly the same as I've stripped out of my package okay and I'll do exactly the same for the destination bit now again I'm doing the same here but I'm looking for a target type of raw file destination and again I'm looking for an annotation tag of add target I'm doing a local replace here and I'm doing I'm just getting one little tag there and sorry there, there we go and what I'm bringing back in here is my multicast I'm bringing in my, my cache component my conditional split, split and my raw file destination so again this is exactly the same code that I coded in my package I just stripped it out now some of you may sit there and go well hold on what is what is that all about it's still the same amount of BIML code it's still everything else but you remember if you are working in a a larger team or a larger project or even if you are a consulting business and you put a lot of time and effort in your IP in building up a framework that you don't really want to give to all of your developers to play with you really want to keep that in a central location where you as the BI architect can have full control of it you can even secure it you can do whatever you can even put it in a DLL so it's completely obfuscated from the people looking at it so that the developers or the business analysts or the data monitors they focus on the things that they are meant to focus on they don't have to look at the plumbing they don't have to even know about it all they need to know about is when I hit the build switch my BI architect or my system engineer or whatever the um, title is that that person has he's taking care of all of that he's gonna put all of the wiring in for me and he's gonna put all of the plumbing in for me and also because it's then centralized you then have the ability to go and tweak it and change it so if this pattern doesn't work for you you can in a central location go and change that pattern that's similar to include files but it's a lot more powerful um, you can have in a central location because with an include file it, your BI developers still have access to those include files they're still visible so when the BI developer looks at this package over here again he will see all of the plumbing in his design surface and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit build on this and I'll show you the difference between um, having the transformers um, the plumbing hidden and the plumbing visible um, what I'm going to do is I've built this project here and I'm just going to reload this now imagine you working through you're working through a project and all of a sudden your, your BI developer your data model or your business analysts are sitting with the business and you kind of do want to show them something there's my uh, data flow task and I have my source 
and I have my destination. That's all I have. I've now built this project, right? And your developers can focus on just getting the source to the target and just working all of that out before they even put in the plumbing. But now, where is my plumbing? I, I thought you said that when I build all of my plumbing, it's going to be back in. Well, to put the, you can actually switch your plumbing on and off very easily, and I'll show you how that works. In a MIST project, if you right-click on the project file itself, you go to the properties, and again, this code will be made available for you to download. So, you know, don't try and squint and try and write this down right now because um, you'll have all of this. But basically, there's a, a in your command line here, there's a switch there called P and it's transformer script settings. And that's telling you where is the main framework file. Now, you can have multiples of these, but where is the main framework file? And, um, and that is just the, uh, the, the connection or the, the file path to a file called tfpackageframework.bml. And that is the framework file that's going to actually call the rest of the BIML file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and show you that file and show you that it's not rocket science. So I'll open up this file here and as you can see here I have all of my frameworks um, commented out. Here is my source container, here is my lookup container, here's my target destination and here is my script form. But here's another one here called package logging. Well I'm not going to go through this file in a whole heap of time but I'm going to show you this anyway. So this is my framework that I use. Now imagine you want to add auditing and logging to all of your packages. What you can do here is again have a target of merge mode, local merge. What local merge means is say take this, this, this thing that I'm targeting and merge whatever I'm putting inside of here with that. So this is a great way for you to say well hold on I want to have a standard set of variables in every single package. So um, I have, you know, I want my execution, this is relevant to my framework and I want to have all of these variables part of my framework. Also something that, I, that you can do in this, you can only do this in transformers by the way, you have access to something called compl compiler settings. When you hit the build button, Bimmel then knows, listen, okay, hold on, I now am compiling. What version am I compiling for? Because remember, in your project, you can tell it, you can compile for version 2012 or for 2008 or 2014 in the, in, the, in the upcoming release. What this means is you can have a single logging framework for every single version of SQL Server that is out there. So instead of having an include file for 2005, an include file for 2008 or for 2012 and then one for 2014, you can have a single logging framework that says, listen, if I'm 2012, well, I, I know my, my um, server execution is in system, and it's not in, 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 in um, a namespace called user. Um, and again, if I, I'm doing the same here, which variable am I want to pass down? I'm going to add my event handlers here. So for me, I want to add my own pre-execute. And again, you can have things like says, hold on, I don't want to add this if I've already got it on pre-execute. And the last one here is obviously for 2008 um, R2. And I only have customers for 2008 R2 and 12 at the moment. So I don't, I didn't really bother with the 2005 version down here. But for 2012, listen, I want to, uh, 2008, listen, I want to go and have my SQL Server log provider and it's logging to SSIS log. And I've got on error on, you know, I'm just configuring the log event because I don't have the 2012 log. So this is another way that you can add it. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to uh, add this down, down here. Okay, so now I have switched on my framework and I can switch any one of these on and off. So if you are testing, you can actually comment out a piece of code and add it in. So if you want to test parts, your, your transformer framework, in sections, you you just comment them out, and that's how e the easiest way to for you to um, to sort of comment your framework. So I hit build again on this, and uh, hopefully it builds with all of that. Uh, okay, so it's going to just build it up. So as you can see here, I'm building my project transformers, my custom transformers, and my core transformers. Um, so these transformers that we obviously have is our project transformers, and that's what we're adding to the the pack package. So it's built successfully. I'll reload this and what you can see here right now is um, there is my data control flow, there's my sequence container added, there's my script post added, and if I open up my data flow task here, there is my entire data flow task is added there. Um, probably seems like something is missing there. But also in the in the back end here I've got my logging switched on. Um, you know, I've got I've got all of my logging done here. I've added some additional variables. Down the bottom here, there's my variables that was added as part of my framework. 
and I think even I will have some package configuration happening over here okay so that in a nutshell um, and I, I want to leave a bit of time for it but that in a nutshell is I suppose transformers so before we finish up I'd just like to thank you once again for taking the time uh, to look at this webinar about transformers with me um, so what I would like to do is leave you with a couple of the resources that where you can get more information if you are interested so we've got a couple of Twitter handles there. At Bimmel Script is the main Twitter handle. My Twitter handle is at Bimmel Down Under. If you're watching Reeves Smith's session, his Twitter handle is at SQL Reeves. And we've got a couple of LinkedIn groups there. So obviously we've got the Bimmel user group in Denmark and Australia. And then the main Bimmel user group if you are, I suppose, anywhere outside of the Scandinavian area and Australia New Zealand. We've got Virgins Mist. If you want any information about Mist, you go to virgins.com forward slash Mist. Great place where you can find all kinds of Bimmel resources is uh, bimmelscript.com and you may have actually downloaded this video from bimmelscript.com. If you are using Bits Helper, although the session wasn't really relevant to Bits Helpers, you can find Bits Helper at bitshelper.codeplex.com and all documentation you can find at verigens.com forward slash documentation. And if you, again, if you're watching Reeves's session, he's with Bimmel articles, um, which you can find at sqlservercentral.com. Once again, thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great time using Bimmel Script and Transformers.